How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about nitro tuning. So I did a video a while back called Nitro Tuning the Basics. This is basically part two of that. So I plan to do a full series with uh, lots of information about tuning nitro engines, but again, this is going to kind of be the basics part two. In part one, I talked mainly about uh, making sure you preheat the engine, don't start making uh, adjustments to the engine until it's fully heat saturated. And then basically what the low speed, mid speed, high speed, and idle do. Today I'm going to talk a little bit more on information that is really important to make sure you're able to get the proper tune. Because you can have problems with your vehicle that no matter what you do tuning wise, it's not going to drive or perform like a properly tuned engine. It's super important to make sure the clutch is in really good shape, the clutch is properly broken in. If the clutch isn't fully seated and it's slipping, it's going to make it more difficult to get the proper tune. So you want to make sure the clutch is seated, fully broken in. And also, you always want to try to tune your engine with the radio on. Now, you can tune the engine by just pulling the linkage open. The problem is, especially if you're using a smaller Venturi, when you're pulling the throttle open, you're not gonna always pull it to the length of that Venturi. Sometimes you're gonna pull it a little too far, sometimes not quite far enough, and that's gonna have an impact on the tune of the engine. So, I recommend always making sure you set your linkage first, and you do all your tuning with the radio and vehicle on. Another thing, you want to make sure that your, your car is race ready. So you want to make sure you have your tires and wheels mounted tight on the car. I see guys sometimes trying to tune their engine with no tires and wheels. The engine's going to sound much leaner than what it's going to be when it's under load if you have no tires and wheels on. So always want to make sure you have tires and wheels, EPA adjusted, and also know that if you're tuning your engine on the box, just like tuning it with no tires and wheels, when there's no load and it's able to free rev, the engine's going to sound a little bit leaner than what it's going to be on the track. So when the engine's under load, it's going to be a little bit richer. Um, it's always ideal if you're able to, to tune the engine either on the track or in a parking lot. Um, but a lot of times when we're at races, you're having to bench tune it on the starter box. So when you're tuning it on the starter box, it's really important to make sure you pay really close attention to not only the sound, but also the feeling. So as you're pulling the trigger on the box, um, when the car is on the box, when the engine's fully saturated, as the movement of the trigger, you're going through the range, that sound should be basically one to one. So if you're increasing the throttle at a faster pace, the RPM should increase at a fast pace. But if you're doing a slow pull all the way through the range of the throttle on the transmitter, that RPM range should increase at that same rate. So if you start to pull the throttle really slow at a, at a steady rate, but very slow, and it kind of ramps up faster than what you're pulling the throttle, it's probably too lean on bottom. If you start to pull the throttle and it's one to one or very linear, and then it speeds up, the RPM range speeds up faster in the mid range, could be too lean on the mid range. The opposite of that could be is as you're pulling the throttle and you get to about the mid range of the trigger, if it starts to slow, <clears throat> the RPM range slows down, it's not at that same rate you're pulling the trigger, the mid range could be too rich. Um, so it's really important to not only listen to the sound, but also compare that sound to the movement that you're pulling the trigger through the transmitter. 
And again, you want that to be as close to one-to-one -to -one as possible. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different, like I said, when the wheels are on the ground. It's gonna be a little bit richer um, just because it's, it's under load. Um, but also, like I mentioned in the Tuning Basics video one, always make sure that the engine is fully saturated with heat. You wanna make sure it's up to 180 to 200 degrees before you start making adjustments. One thing to be careful with when making adjustments on the box is if you're spending a long time tuning the engine on the box, you're not getting any airflow over the cooling head. So if you wanna make sure you get it up to temp, but you also wanna make sure that you're not sitting there tuning the engine for 10 minutes where it's just constantly building heat because it could cause the tune to slightly change.